The grace of ballet with the brutality of street fighting. If only you could actually play it. This is Sega Masters. We now come to the second of Sega's great sports lineup, and this entry takes us to the ice for some hockey action. In fact, this North American exclusive title was the first hockey game of the 8-bit generation, as it was released a year before Nintendo brought their own ice hockey cart to the NES, which was then followed by Konami's Blades of Steel. While it looked like Sega finally beat Nintendo to the punch at something, the NES carts are both considered bona fide classics, while a rather curious decision causes Sega's cart to fall far from championship contention. One or two players can go at it, and you can pick the difficulty level and length of each period. The focus is on international competition, but in the single player mode, you're forced to be the US squad without the ability to choose a different country's team. Pretty much a case of forced patriotism if you ask me. At least you get to choose your opposition from one of seven other international squads, which are supposedly listed in increasing difficulty. Interesting how the roster shows the game's age with countries like West Germany, Czechoslovakia, and the Soviet Union represented. The two-player mode does let each person pick from any of the eight teams. Once the puck drops, the game is hockey as you might expect with the standard 5-on-5 five five action, taking place on the traditional horizontal rink that's three screens wide. You pass and shoot the puck to the opponent's goal through three periods, and no penalties are called in this arena so you can mug your opponent to steal the puck all you want. However, there's a catch. You can't actually play this game with a normal gamepad. Instead, Sega decided to use this cart to debut a special controller, the notorious Sega Sports Pad, which is a trackball with some of the regular gamepad features. Like most 1980s peripherals, a few games were made for it before it was quickly forgotten. The idea of using a trackball isn't necessarily a bad one, and might have been a unique if not interesting experience if done properly. Unfortunately, in this case it goes horribly wrong as the sports pad renders this game just about unplayable. Simply put, the trackball is very unresponsive as you have to roll it like mad to get your player moving any considerable distance. More often than not, the CPU player is able to snatch the puck from your stick and zoom towards your goal with you unable to do anything to stop him. Also, forget about trying to pass the puck to your teammates or even attempt a shot on the goal. It's just plain impossible and good luck trying to help your goalie block your opponent's shots. You can easily find yourself down by a large margin even before the first period ends. The sad part is you're stuck with using the sports pad. If you try to use the regular game pad anyway, like I'm attempting to do with my emulator to record the game footage, you can only move diagonally up left or down right and that's not going to do you any favors. I suppose it is possible to find some ways to work around this limitation with a lot of perseverance, but you shouldn't have to do that. Even if you do somehow endure an entire game from start to finish, there's no tournament mode or season option to give you any reason to go through it again. After the game concludes, you're treated to a quick ending sequence, then it's back to the title screen. Also, if the score is tied at the end of the third period, the two-player mode does feature a sudden death overtime period, but in the one-player mode, tie games always go to the CPU for whatever reason. There's not much to say about the visuals and audio either. The graphics are pretty clean with no breakup or slowdown, though the players look like multicolored blobs and their colors don't really match their country. Plus the way the screen shifts left to right instead of scrolling smoothly like other hockey games can be a bit jarring, especially if two players are fighting back and forth for the puck right on the edge of the screen. 
The up-tempo music doesn't really fit for a hockey cart, but it's actually pretty catchy. Yet there are no real sound effects other than some noise that I'm assuming is supposed to represent the crowd. The anthem snippets that play on the team select screen are also nice. So ultimately, great ice hockey is an epic fail for the Master System in the US, because who wants a game you can't play? Especially with the controller it was specifically made for. An option for the regular gamepad might have salvaged this cart and made it at least a somewhat solid experience, even if it's just a quick hockey session. The aforementioned NES titles are your best bets for 8-bit hockey action, and in fact three years later Sega themselves would render this cart obsolete with the release of a much improved hockey title for the Master System, Slapshot. All in all, you have no reason to use this cart as anything but a hockey puck.